Hi, I'm uh, David Kendall here on behalf of the International Diabetes Center and pleased to be here today with IDOC um, to talk about something that has been really in the news and I think uh, in the minds of practitioners and that's diabetes drug safety. Uh, a number of issues have uh, arisen over the years related to diabetes drug safety and historically this dates back to the use of insulin and the occurrence of severe hypoglycemia with the introduction of compounds like fenformin in the United States, which was associated with a significant increase in the risk of lactic acidosis. I think for the practitioner today, um, there needs to be a measure of both caution and rational behavior um, as relates to reports of issues around diabetes drug safety. Some of the more recent examples include issues around the cardiovascular safety of rosiglitazone or of Andia. And while there are some data sets that certainly suggest there may have been an unanticipated uh, effect of uh, rosiglitazone on cardiovascular risk, um, and there are treatment alternatives such as pioglitazone that may not share that risk, um, I think early or perhaps uh, initial responses to, to this tend to far exceed uh, the data that support any increase in risk. Um, similarly, the known risk of fluid retention, edema, and heart failure that may occur with insulin sensitizers like the TZDs. Um, it is well described that peripheral edema and fluid retention, and in some cases, um, worsening of heart failure can occur. But I think taken globally, and when one looks specifically at clinical trials, while these episodes of fluid retention with heart failure occur, the impact of these therapies on insulin resistance and ultimately on cardiovascular risk may be beneficial. So understanding that while this is a known risk of this class of compounds, when one balances it with the potential benefit of treatment with, for example, pioglitazone, reducing cardiovascular events, um, you have the perspective needed to make treatment decisions. Um, more recently, there have been uh, issues raised around GLP-1 agonists and the potential risk for development of pancreatitis. And while this has been limited to case reports that controlled studies, population database analyses, um, and the like have not demonstrated a substantial increase in this risk, this still makes the news and it has been reported to the FDA, so is included in the drug labeling. Um, and while certainly one can't refute that these cases of pancreatitis occurred in patients treated with compounds like exenatide, uh, pancreatitis also occurs in patients treated with a variety of diabetes therapies and other therapies for diseases like hypertension. Um, taken in total, I think gathering additional information is important, um, but the risk as reported appears to be quite small and there are no compelling evidence that there is excess risk that is clearly associated with the use of GLP-1 agonists. So, you know, a practical approach to this for me would be the use of these compounds with the understanding that there is some small potential risk, um, avoiding its use only in patients who, one, don't tolerate it due to GI side effects, or two, in those where there may have been a history of acute episodes of abdominal pain and pancreatitis, which would be difficult to differentiate um, in the setting of active therapy. Um, more recently, there have been issues raised around uh, an association between insulin use and an increased risk of cancer, in particular long-acting insulin analogs like Glargine. Um, these reports, recently published here in the middle of 2009, um, raise the issue but in no consistent way um, and in certainly no convincing way demonstrated a, a relationship between the use of insulin glargine and cancer. And while I think this is certainly important uh, hypothesis generating information and more analysis should be done, there are nothing about these current data that suggests that in any regular way insulin therapy should either be stopped or changed in any substantial way. Um, that effective insulin therapy often includes the use of long-acting insulin analogs when combined either with oral medications in type 2 diabetes or with mealtime insulin in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. The important feature here is that there are no data to date that support that withdrawal of these types of therapy from any given patient with diabetes should be considered based on the information at hand. So while 
drug safety will always be an important focus for any chronic disease like diabetes. Uh, I think we also have to understand the enormous risks that come from undertreated or ineffectively treated diabetes. The known risks of chronic elevations in blood glucose um, are established and can be substantially reduced by improving blood glucose control using many, if not all, of these therapies.